Hello everyone. So in today's video, we're going to be showing you how to build this awesome dog bed. So if you're interested in it, just stay with us and we'll show you how to build it. So right here, we went to Shell Lumber to buy some more uh, wood for the project. We had some at home already, but we needed a little bit more after measuring. So this should be enough for the rest of the project. This is the doggy bed plants that we have so far. These here are gonna be a bunch of little woods that are gonna be going all over this to hold the mattress in place. And these are some of the ideas for the front of the bed. I like this one the most so far. This one is like a river table. And this one is just different pieces of wood of different colors. But I think I like this one the best so far. So these are the plants that we are working with for the bed. Venus, are you supervising that daddy does a good job in your bed? Yes, that's what you're doing? You're a great supervisor. So this is the wood that we're gonna be using for the wood bed. It's uh, considered four quarter at the lumber yard, but when you measure it out, it's about three quarters of an inch. And it's the same wood that we used for the water stand uh, project. So we'll leave a link for that in the description below if you want, if you're interested to see that video. And here I'm just measuring out like the rough dimensions of the sides and the front pieces. So go ahead and cut that out and we'll finalize those dimensions later on in the video. So for this, I'm just using the circular saw just to rough it out. And I'll hold a square up to the side of it just to try to get that edge as square as possible. But again, we're gonna, we're gonna end up making sure that all the edges are nice and square. And this here is my track saw. You might think it looks exactly the same as the other saw. And it is pretty similar. Uh, this one just rides on a track. And I have a better blade on this one. So it gives me a nice finished edge uh, when I'm done passing the, the, the saw. And here we're going to start using the domino joiner to join those two boards together because they weren't tall enough individually and I needed it to be about six inches tall. And right here, the domino joiner, you could use just about any joiner, but the domino adds a little bit of strength and I'm really just using it right now for alignment purposes so that the boards are perfectly straight. Those dominoes are really tight, so I had to hammer them in. And as you could see, they probably use a little too much glue. And about an hour later, I went ahead and took off the clamps and started to take off the excess glue before it got too hard. Right now is the easiest time to take off that glue. And now I'm trimming it up to get all the pieces to six inches because that's going to be all the sides of the, of the bed frame. And then I'm using the track saw now to square up the outer edges and get the final dimensions.
So 52 inches is going to be the final uh, width of the front and back pieces. And I'm marking that right now. Okay, and here what we're doing is marking out in the front piece. If you saw at the beginning of the video, there was a, an angular piece in the front that was cut out. And that's what I'm measuring out right now. So from the side, from the right side of it, I went up three inches, which is halfway up the board. And on the other side, I went to about 27 inches. And then I just connected the a 45 degree angle. Here we're deciding on the, the design that we're going to use in the front and we decided to go with a diamond shape because it was something we were we were contemplating on doing a hexagon but that would have been too difficult for us so we decided to go with a diamond shape and we really liked how it came out in the end. And of course, the helpers. So this is the design that we came up with. It's like little diamonds, triangle thingies. And I think it looks super cute. He said it looked kind of difficult, but I like it. And here I'm just using the track saw to make quick work of all the all the cuts for the diamond. I went down about five millimeters and in imperial terms that's about a quarter of an inch. And the track saw makes really quick work of this. You just lay the track out on the exact line where you want to cut and just pass it by. I was really worried. I thought this was going to be a lot harder, but the track saw made it so easy. That's how it came out after we took it after we cut all the grooves out of it here and here we're cutting out what will be the entrance of the bed that angular piece that you saw at the beginning of the video i started it off with the track saw and went close to the line but not quite all the way because i didn't want to cut past it since the saw is circular and it I, it wouldn't cut all the way through and then i just finished it off with a hand saw Apollo, are you helping daddy? Yes? You're helping daddy to build your bed? It's gonna be yours or news? Who's gonna use it first? And now I'm just sanding it down. You'll see me sand down the pieces many times during this project. 
But right now I'm sanding down all the little uh, furry pieces that kind of were left by the, the saw when I passed it by. I think at this point I sanded the pieces up to 150 grit. And here what I'm doing is cutting the side piece that meets up with the front so that they both meet up at a at an even joint because they're the front is going to be cut at three inches so the side piece also had to meet up at it at three inches you'll see later in the video exactly what i mean now we're trying out this tape to make i guess a barrier so that the epoxy doesn't just run off onto the table And this stuff was really sticky. It's super strong tape. And we also put tape on some of these knots that had holes. And here we're using the same pigment that we used in the dog bowl video. They're black diamond. And the color scheme we were trying to go for was pink, blue, and purple, but we didn't have pink or purple. So we had to mix colors and we got that color that it actually says pink on the, on the front label, but it didn't quite look like pink. It kind of looked a little bit more orange to me. So we mixed it a little bit with white and then the blue, we mixed it a little bit with, with pink. I think if there was one thing that we can change, we would have just gone with all blue because the purple didn't really show up as much as we wanted and the pink kind of looked muted. So we would have just used blue or something or gotten an actual pink. And that other dark color that you saw us do, that was gonna be for the knots because we didn't want those to really stand out. Here you see us mixing the epoxy and I mixed way too much epoxy. I really need to learn how to measure the epoxy a little better because I used way too much. Oh yeah, it's starting to become purple. Yeah, it looks purple yeah. now. And it looked purple when we poured it, it like but bottom. it just didn't stay yeah. that way. It's like plumped up a little bit, the pink. And there we're kind of troweling the epoxy into the holes and kind of working it in as much as possible, trying to avoid uh, any air bubbles that we can by kind of pushing the stick into the pockets. We left it overnight to dry and when we came back the next morning 
you could kind of see already that the pink looks super muted. Yeah, that tape was super tough to take off. Good morning. Today is day two of our build of uh, the doggy bed. Today we have to sand down all this excess epoxy. Like we just want the epoxy color on the lines, not all of these that we put on top. So we have to remove all of that, add dominoes to add the bed. And we have to cut the little woods that are gonna hold the mattress in place. So let's start. You guys want to come to help? Come, let's go. You're helping, Venus? You're helping? <coughs> yes, you are. And here we're using the heat gun to soften up the epoxy. And then we're using that tool. We'll link it down in the description below all the tools that we use for this project. But that tool is invaluable for taking off the epoxy. I was super worried. We don't have a planer. And I was really worried that we weren't going to be able to take off all that epoxy. And it worked like a charm on this front piece. This was actually a two person job. One of us was using the heat gun while the other was trying to plane off the excess epoxy. One other thing that I noticed when I was planing off the epoxy, I think I went a little too aggressive and there was a few places where I kind of ripped out a little bit of epoxy from the grooves that we made, but there was no issues. We ended up sanding it down and it looked perfect in the end. Somebody came to check on us working. Yeah, Sandy was here for a while. How comfortable she is with us. Yeah. Don't worry, we're not gonna use tools while you eat. And more waiting. And more waiting. Here I'm making a rabbit for what's going to hold the base. And that's what's going to hold the legs later on in the project. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Then I added a bevel to the inside corners of the frame. And that's going to be so that when they lay down, they don't hit a hard edge. And using the trusty domino but this time we're gonna be using it a little differently we're using what's called the domino connector so since we have a our bedroom is on the second floor we figured it would be kind of hard to take that huge bed frame up the stairs so we decided to go with the domino connector and it's basically like IKEA furniture on steroids So these are the connectors. You just insert these things and then you can screw it together and you can knock it down whenever you feel like it. Super handy for if you're moving. No glue? No, none of this gets glue. 
So those little screw thingies, what they're going to do is screw all the way in and they'll end up expanding that metal insert that we put in. Inside the huh? metal thing. So as you turn it, see this thing? It comes out. So let me get one actually so you can see what it does. So when you start turning it, these like teeth right here, mm -hmm. as I'm pushing, you see that screw, the, the piece of the screw right there? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna push the screw that way. This will come out more and it'll expand the, the teeth and the teeth are gonna grab the sides and that's why you don't need glue. So this is just gonna be holding on with tension. What he said. So these holes get all of this. So we'll start this. What do I do with the screwdriver? Thank you, that's why I love you. You have the hole there, put it like that, and then this part here. And then we'll repeat that for the rest of it. So that's what I was talking about, the IKEA furniture on steroids. You just screw those things together and it kind of locks it in. It actually pulls it tighter. And it worked like a charm in this project. We have a side, it's 40 inches. Let's check. Right at 40 inches. Six inches. Inches. And let's go and get the front width. Front width to be 52 inches. Right at 52. Today is day three of our build, and hopefully, the last day it could be day four, two. We'll see. <laughs> Pro at chiseling, just so you know, but I really don't know what I'm doing with the chisel, but it's okay. Ready? That gave me comfort. So here what I'm doing is just squaring up the edges. Because when I use the router bit to make the rabbit, it leaves a round edge, and the wood that we're putting in is square. So we needed to just square up the edges so that they, they insert it in there perfectly. So that the wood actually fits in there. Remember what it, when you cut it is square. Because if not, see this round, this edge here is rounded. When I go to butt it up, you'll see that gap. If I don't, um, so when I put the, the actual thing, the base, that's how far in it'll, it'll be able to go. You'll have a gap. Now on this side, by uh, making a square, butts up all the way. Cool. And here I'm just cutting off the what's going to be the base that's going to go into those parts and that's what's going to hold the legs later on. And now what I'm doing is cutting what's gonna be the slats. Those are gonna be the parts that are going to sit on top of that base, and that's what's going to hold the bed up. Again, you'll see all this come together later on in the video. So 
Today is our fourth day of the building, hopefully our last day. Today we are making the beds, doing the finishing, and what else? What do you mean? We're not making the bed, we bought the bed. We made the legs though. <laughs> and we're already we're gonna put it on to the base and then we're gonna apply the finish and i think we're done <laughs> we'll see I hopefully know. today is the last we'll, day maybe we'll think of something else that we forgot we're making it up as we go along so <laughs> and here what we're doing is measuring the legs i'm trying to come up with like a tapered angle for the legs because i didn't want them to be completely square so they're going to end up being seven inches tall total height and then the taper is going to start an inch below that. So at six inches and they're going to taper off all the way down to, I think, one inch. And to be safe, what I'm doing is I'm making a jig so I can make all the legs the exact same taper. And this is also going to help to keep my hands away from the blade. So next, what we're gonna do is put a little chamfer on the edge, just so that it kind of matches the aesthetics of the of the bed, since it has like bevels already. So we're gonna we're just gonna put one on the on the edges of the of the legs. Something small. It looks good. I think it adds to it a little bit, right? Yeah. Plus, these are the temporary legs. Yeah. We said those were going to be the temporary legs, I but I really like them and I think we're going to end up using those legs uh, forever. Let me show the holes themselves being done. And I forgot to mention uh, that if you don't have a domino, because this is a kind of expensive tool, you could use dowels uh, or go with traditional joinery like mortise and tenon. Um, yeah, there's many ways to do it. I was just using this. So what's cool about the domino, and it kind of works like a like a biscuit joiner if you've ever used one of those, where it has layout lines. And what I did was I made my lines on where I want it to go. And I'm just gonna use the same um, layout that I use on the legs, and I just line it up. You could also use the Craig and joint then I'll as well if you're if you don't have that. That's that's pretty good. I mean, I don't I don't think we're gonna have a problem with that. It's only a few weeks until the metal legs get here. Yeah. So this will work out, and and even if it wasn't for the metal legs, I think this will still work out. Um, and this is obviously there's no glue in this right now, but with glue it's a it's a strong joint. Even without glue, it's really hard to take apart. <laughs> Venus, do you want your bed to be ready already? Yes? You're supervising us? Oh! Before we glue it, we are gonna do a dry fit of the bed. This is the first time we're actually putting the bed on it. Yep, and the bed fit. Looks like I measured right. <laughs> Always using too much glue. Here we had decided that the slats needed more support in the middle. So I'm just doing that now. And you can kind of see that middle support that I was talking about. Venus, how I feel to have the most fancy bed in this house. Yes, my dog has a fancier bed than I do. Now to hold the base in place and the support in the middle, we're just going to use screws. Okay, so now we're going to put in the slats and then for spacing, I actually got these little popsicle sticks 
that we use for the epoxy. And that's what I'm using for the spacing to get the perfect spacing on each side. So I'm just gonna put it down one side, put it up against it, and now we have perfect spacing on both sides. And now we start drilling. So just to note, we countersunk. That bit that I'm using has a countersink uh, attachment to it. And we countersunk all the holes so that the screws sat a little bit below the surface so that the bed doesn't catch onto it. And then I used some scrap blocks that were laying around. And we used that for the even spacing of the actual slats themselves. It looks like a thing now. Alright. Yeah. Fits in there. Perfect. As we expected. Keep it on. Go ahead, buddy. Good boy. Oh, -hoy. oh yeah, buddies. <laughs> Good boy. Alright, come here, bub. Good job. Alright, now Venus. Venus, go. Come on, Venus. Opa. Yeah, we need to work on something so that the bed doesn't slide when they jump off of it. Buddy, you look so handsome in there. Apollo, is this is your new bed? I thought it was for Venus. It's for you? Everybody. We need to finish you like it. Bed? You like it? Yes. Okay. Okay. And here we're applying a finish. We're using the same finish that we used on the dog bowl project. It's simple finish. And I believe it's just linseed oil that hardens up. Put the doggy gate here like that Venus and Apollo they don't come to the bed while we're putting the finisher and while it dries. We're gonna be using this ribbon that came with one of my purses to hold the little slabs in place like that if we take it apart we know where each slab goes now it looks like a real bed it looks so cute bedroom it looks so beautiful i love it i love it i love it i really like how it looks minus love this she's already in her bed and we have a fan there for her minus do you love your bed mommy you like it Venus? you like it <laughs> oh you look so beautiful mommy All in all, I'm super happy with how this bed turned out. I really like it. And the dogs seem to like it too. 